I leave home for a few days and look what happens. This won't take long. <laughs> Imagine the wealth of information, the knowledge, so much, so fast. It's glorious. Alrighty guys, so at this point Cortana is looking great. Everything is blended well, the hydro turned out awesome, the 2K is completely cured, and it's time to start working on the internals. But a blaster this cool deserves something equally cool and unique inside. Now, we will be using XP-180 motors because they're awesome, but I uh, wanted a special cage. Now, Snickers has not been in contact recently for really anybody. It's been very difficult to get a hold of him, so I needed to do something that wasn't a Snickers cage as much as I would like to use a Snickers cage. And that's where my friend Carlos came in. So this is an open flywheel project cage that was printed on a Formlabs resin printer. And while I'm still kind of mad at Formlabs for lying to me at New York Comic Con, I am thrilled that Carlos had one of these at I believe his university and could print off one in a completely transparent filament. It's not really a filament so much as it's actual resin and it comes out of a pool, but this is really, really neat. Now it still has a bunch of stints on it. Some of them are in non-impacting areas, so they're not an issue. Some of them like the interior wells for these motors, as well as the, uh, the running rails around the flywheel compartments need to be sanded out. So I've been coming in with a micro file, but I want to show you the components that we're going to be using. So at my event end war, containment crew came and they actually sold out of these. These are the containment crew cyclone flywheels end war exclusive and they have been laser engraved to immaculate detail if you guys can see with the end war logo and the containment crew logo. So you can't buy these. They were only available at the end war event and they sold out almost instantly. So these are very, very cool, very, very rare. And I figured that since this was originally going to be for end war, but time constraints and organizing the event made it so that it could not be there in time, I'm going to use these as a little nod to that. Plus, I really like the Cyclone flywheels. They are very nice in their own right. So I have a pair of those and they will be going on. And then we will come over here. The workshop is still absolutely a mess because I am still unpacking from the event. But here we have our XP-180 motors. These are brand new, so they're still going to have the gears on the edges here, which is not a big deal. And we're going to have to re-solder their leads. That's the, the funky thing about these. They are really nice, but they're not bespoke for nerf. So you have to come in and adjust them. To get these gears off, you just create a wedge of some sort and just slowly try and pry them off. I don't normally do this on camera, so there we are. And so that is clean and ready to go. I also snipped this off. No induction here. You can actually see the, uh, the magnets in this are so strong that it's gripping to my tools. So we'll pull that there, snip off that solder dart where it's being grounded, and then we'll actually just desolder these leads from the, the actual brushes up there. So these are going to go in here. I think that they're going to fit nicely and we should have a really cool looking thing underneath our window on the side. Let's go. All right guys, so this is our push button switch. Obviously I dremeled out a hole before I painted and I'm not a big believer in like tooting my own horn or anything and I definitely got a little bit lucky, but the threading on this is so tight that actually the threading that holds this on the back end is gripping the uh, 
the switch itself. So I'm screwing it into the body of the blaster, which is really kind of cool. You learn to appreciate like the little lucky things like that after you've made a couple hundred of these things. So this is neat. Like I will keep in mind that that bit to full uh, depth plus 2K clear uh, is what gives you this ideal fit for this particular switch. Unfortunately, this switch is a weird switch that I got at Radio Shack before all of the Radio Shacks went out of business because not a lot of people buy components anymore. However, still cool. Appreciate the little things. Alrighty guys, so before I show off Cortana and all of its glory firing demo style outside, I want to talk about it inside because I feel like I often lose a lot of detail in the glaring sunlight. Hopefully with a little bit more control in here, I can show you that this is pretty sweet. So I could go top to front or back or up or down, but I'm just going to try and cover it all at once. So this is a top-notch paint job. It is a combination of blue and then a lighter blue enamel, but the light blue enamel, of course, has a full hydrographics job done by myself with a matrix film. That gives us a very cool Cortana-like uh, body kind of thing, how the code is constantly scrolling to make up her uh, UI sort of display, So, or I guess avatar, rather. Now, there is a hole that was cut into the stripe to add this switch. It does something pretty awesome. Cortana glows, right? So this is pretty sweet. Then all around here, we have a bunch of different, like, I guess, parts and add-ons. So this is uh, the kind of battery door that I actually use. You can buy these from Containment Crew. It is designed uh, by EOC. It's printed in blue translucent filament specifically for this project. And it houses uh, just enough extra space here with this blue aluminum thumb screw to get our 2S graphene in there. So that is ultra clean and fits nicely. Now, the reason that the light shines through is, of course, this is uh, Ben's work from black steel props and he uh, has been doing these for a while but these are strife parts they are all translucent kind of uv reactive blue so we have uv parts inside uh, unfortunately the way that this transparent uh, window and cage works i did not have a way to connect these with blue so instead i'm using a trans orange barrel material which kind of gives it an orange tip not really but it counts for something uh, up top, you can see that this glows, and this glows, and this glows as well. That's all UV reactive, so it's pretty cool, and that also activates the voltmeter in the back. So all of that goes to make a really nice performance piece. You can see the XP-180s in here, but again, this is a translucent blue window, so that the blue will glow through, and it's a little bit foggy due to the way that the super glue cured around the edges. But the 3D printed attachment here that allows me to set this in is uh, some of Alice Coat Duck's work up in Canada. So we have Canada, America, America, um, China, and a bunch of cool stuff. So the logos, of course, we're placing here and here and naming Cortana thusly are from my good friend Avery of Custom 3D Nerf. I think that he's doing work again, so that's very exciting. Everything else is just snappy standard mod work from me. Uh, there's polysilicate holding the switch in. The switch is a 25 amp. Like this is just a top notch build using those uh, XP 180s. But I'd like to show it to you in the dark before I show it to you outside so that you can really get a feel for the LED work that went into this. So let's kill these lights. Hopefully this lighting is pretty good. We can drop our transparent magazine here, push this button, and we have just enough ambient light that you should be able to see that all of these parts glow, including up here we have the barrel glowing, the muzzle device glows. I think that it looks really sweet. You can see that I did even suspend an LED set here and here so that not only does the resin cage glow, but so does the jam door. The only thing that doesn't glow is the battery door, and I kind of like that it doesn't glow because it would look different than the rest since this is a translucent filament and this is UV reactive material. So uh, that's resin versus uh, PLA plastic. Now this and this glow a little bit subtler, but everything else is very bright. Even here, here, and here, all of the mechanics and bits and bobs glow as well. I'll take it just a little bit, woo, just a little bit darker over here so that you guys can really get a feel for it. And then we can go outside, but this is going to look sweet. The voltmeter is also blue because everything should match, right guys? So my AI looks really great outside in the light. This is of course where it was designed to be utilized as at SCNC Wars and for night games. Firing. You can see that we are getting some whirly birds and I think that it has something to do with the cage. That's a little unfortunate. It seems to have a slight tilt 
in it, which is really obnoxious. Not only are the darts pulling this way just a little bit, but I get the occasional whirly bird. That is somewhat upsetting, and I'm probably going to have to tweak the cage to fix it, but I really wanted to get this video out to you because I've gotten some spiteful comments about how I haven't been putting out enough work recently, which is nuts. I've been traveling so much for you guys, but uh, I, I definitely wanted to share this project with you because it represents a lot of time. There is a ton of love that went into the Cortana build. And so you can definitely see what I meant by pulling to the side there and that's something that we're going to have to correct very very soon. Looks great with these custom magazines that I, I bought specifically to run in it. I wanted as much transparent blue as I could possibly get in there and I'm very very happy with how that turned out so I think that it's a lovely blaster it's a huge tribute to to my love of Halo someday I'll play beyond Halo 3 but I'm going to need the time to do that maybe I'll get like really sick or injured or something and then I can lay in the hospital and crank out four or five but uh thank you guys very much for watching hopefully you enjoy builds like this I know that you guys do like builds like this I want to give a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon for making builds like this possible their support gives me the time to like really work on passion projects like this and the next tier zero strife that I build is probably going to be green and while I don't want to make any promises yet it might be a patreon blaster I it really depends on how much time and what parts go into it but there is a chance that that might be my end of year December patreon build so if you guys are not supporting me on patreon yet that's a really good way to get behind the scenes and know exactly what I'm working on at all times and if you can't support me on on Patreon, that's not a big deal either. Thank you so very much for watching my videos all the way through. It means an absolute ton to me. Uh, I would not be doing this for a living if it weren't for just awesome, awesome viewers like you. So if you enjoy builds like this and think that they are ultra super sweet because we've completely changed everything about this blaster, it really helps me out a lot if you like this video. I know that that's such a cliche, but uh, smashing that like button makes it so much easier for me to justify doing full builds like this because they just don't get nearly as much attention as top fives and, and other zany war footage and, and videos like that. So <laughs> thank you very much for watching. Truly, it means the world to me. And as always, much love. Nerf on. Drek out. It's finished. No. I think we're just getting started. Ah!